Danny Gasparini, and welcome to this segment of uh, Penn Voice. I am joined today by Dr. Brian Baker, who is the artistic director and conductor for Master Chorale. Uh, I should say Masterworks Chorale That's and right. Orchestra. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so welcome, Brian. Um, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Danny. It's a real pleasure to be here. So I think for our audience, we want to start off by saying um, a little bit about what Masterworks Chorale is and a little bit about your history. So Masterworks is this, I think, really wonderful chorus. It's been around more than 50 years. Next year will be our 55th year. Um, it's about 100 people, a little bit more than that right now. And it's full of dedicated, hardworking, enthusiastic, good, wholesome, wonderful people of all kinds, a, a lot of variety in the group, and, and it's, it's a great organization to be working with. I'm just as pleased as punch to be working with them. I've, uh, I started off with uh, piano as my focus, moved into vocal stuff, and then into choral conducting, sort of as the years went by, found what I loved best. How long have you been there, conductor? I think 15 years, it might be 16. So do most of your um, masterworks um, folks stay with you for that long or, um, and, and how do they find you? How do they say, I wanna be part of this group? You know, it's one of the amazing things about this group. There are people who've been in the group for 44 years. Mm -hmm. I think there are two who've been in 45 years. Can you believe that? The longevity, it's amazing. Right. Um, and, and we have a lot of people who are brand new. You know, they've been in just one year or they just came out of college. Um, and the, uh, the way to find out about us is to go to our website, okay. www.masterworks.org, and you can click on the audition. Um, you can also listen to samples of us on the website. You can come to a concert, like we're going to be doing in a few weeks, right. and see if it feels like that's good to you. We have ongoing auditions. People can audition anytime. Right. You can sit in on a rehearsal anytime just to see if you get a, a good vibe from the right. group. I love the age ranges, too, of yeah. um, the folks that are in your program. Uh, it's great to see all the multi-generations of individuals, yeah. like you said, some that have been there almost four or a little over four decades right. and some that are just auditioning now. It's a, it's a great a great variety of individuals yeah, to see. We want to get into um, your next production. That will be March 17th uh, through the 18th. That's, to, to me, this ama I'm, I'm very, very happy about this. Moment. It's an amazing <laughs> And program. I can't tell your enthusiasm for no, this. No, no, I, I, tell I don't know if the audience can feel it or not, but you are, um, you're absolutely terrific. So there are times when, you know, the world is this wonderful place, like, like that song says. And then, then there are times when it's a little bit of a hard place and, and you come up against the darker stuff. And the, um, the program kind of takes us through some of that darker stuff and into the other side, into the light, essentially, so that we kind of make this progression through what's so hard into what's right. so hopeful. We're doing a, some, a one great big piece called The Armed Man by this fellow named Jenkins. Jenkins is this... English composer who's really remarkable. He has had tremendous success in jazz, in rock, in new age, in advertising music, and in classical music. And I can't think of anybody else who's been on top of the charts in England in every one of those fields. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of World War II, peace, the United Nations, and then the European Economic Union, the United, uh, all these things which ensured that peace would be here and everyone was sure that Europe could never sink into war again. And they did. At the end of the century, there was the Balkans and Kosovo Wars. And so this music was composed to honor the victims of those wars mm -hmm. and to sort of acknowledge the horrific violence of the 20th century with the two great wars. And also, because it was the change to a new millennium, hopes for peace in the new millennium. And it's this music that reaches you so directly. You don't have to think. It just kind of fills you up. And it's wonderful. And it takes you on this long progression. It's about an hour. Does not feel like an hour. It feels right. so short. And then you get to the end and you just have this feeling of, of calm, of a balm. Right. Yeah. It's well, really probably nice. why they call it Mass for Peace. Yes, exactly. Oh, man. That's right. Um, how, do you, how do you go about choosing the pieces that you want to perform in concert. I mean, obviously it took a lot of time to think about, and the timing is perfect, I, I might say, yes. for something that um, has inspiration of um, a mass for peace. It is, and I've, I've actually hesitated on this program for a while because not a lot of people out on the West Coast know the armed man of mass for peace. Mm -hmm. It's not famous like Mozart's Requiem. But when you 
run up against all the horrific things we found, the right. shootings in Orlando and the recent school shootings and the wars in Syria and Yemen and Somalia, and you wonder, what, what can I possibly do in mm -hmm. response to this? And for us who do music, this is a way to put our energy, our hopes, into something that feels real. And it's, it's, um, it's very satisfying. And to go with this piece, um, I chose a piece called Another Misa Lo Marme. So the Armed Man is based on this ancient tune called Lo Marme, which is the Armed Man. And he, Jenkins, quotes an early piece, a Renaissance piece, by Palestrina. So we're doing a movement of a Palestrina mass based mm -hmm. on the same tune. And then Barber's gorgeous Adagio for Strings, which has been just sort of the music of mourning for America. And he made a choral transcription of that called the Agnus Dei. Extraordinarily difficult, but gorgeous. I mean, the change from the strings to the human voice just gives it a whole new dimension. Mm -hmm. And then the last piece on the program is called We Can Mend the Sky. And the text is by a 14-year-old girl from Somalia who came to the United States as a refugee. And the music starts with a sort of dark, clashing chords, and they sort of subside, and then you hear a solo voice singing the lines of her beautiful poem of hopes for peace and a place that's safe. And then there are two Somali proverbs, which are also used in it, and they have this sort of rhythmic kind of tribal energy in the music. And then it works its way, and it works its way until it gets to the end, and there's this beautiful sort of, like a, a little bit of a pop song that kind of carries everything forward into a, a feeling comfortable and uplifted place at the end. There might even be a little bit of audience sing-along in that piece. Yeah, and that, I think that's on the clip we're gonna hear a little bit later. Well, yeah, we'll watch the clip at the end. I feel like I've been through the program now with you, just watching your body movement and your hands and, and how you just sway with all the words that you're speaking about the program. I, I think if there's a viewer out there that isn't going to come to your performance on the 17th and 18th, they, um, <laughs> they, they haven't watched this program because you're wanting me to go, but I do wanna make sure that we talk about a couple of things before we show the clip, and that is, What's the community's role in Masterworks, Chorale, and Orchestra? And I, I know I feel in just this 10-minute interview the impact of Masterworks, but have, have you had any folks that come after a show and tell you, oh my gosh, oh. That, that really changed my life, or that was so meaningful to me? Again and again, this happens. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to hear after you've, you've gone and you've poured your your heart and soul out right. into the music, and then somebody tells you how much that touched them, how deeply they felt it, how beautiful it was, how it uplifted them, how it makes them love and want to hear more of this kind of music. Right. And then we also have, uh, and one of my very favorite things about Masterworks is the outreach program, where we, uh, a group of singers, sometimes more, sometimes fewer, go out into the underserved schools and teach music. And it's just great, and we do this, it's usually an after-school program, and we've got three or four programs we work with, and we do these in six and eight week segments, and it's just as heartwarming as anything could be to go teach these kids. Well, Brian, we're, we're going to have to end to get into the little snippet of a clip okay. to give our viewers a, a very small taste of what they could experience if they come and see the show on March 17th. And 18th, but what I want to make sure that we tell our viewers is to make sure to jump on the website. Yeah. You can get your CDs if you can't happen to make a, a performance, but we want to make sure that everybody connects um, with your organization. So we're now going to break into a very short segment and then we'll be ending our program. So let me say thank you, Brian, thank you, for Dan. coming and telling us and showing us and demonstrating <laughs> to us the passion for Masterworks Chorale and Orchestra. Thanks thank, so much. Thank you. Great pleasure.